Okay, um, I wanted to give kind of a break from reading today and um, also kind of touch base with our story that we're dealing with and kind of set a path forward on how we're going to look at it and finish it and compare it to the film. Um, I've left the title of the story off for a reason. Later I do reveal it um, because I felt like the title kind of uh, plays with the story of it and I wanted you guys to read it you know, fresh. And so, um, it is a short story. We will finish it. Uh, we'll be reading it for a few days here. Um, and then we'll compare it to the film. Now the film is called Rear Window and, um, has Jimmy Stewart, Grace Kelly as, as two of the main actors, has a lot of supporting actors. In fact, there's questions that I deal with that here in, in a few days as far as on the reading of it to talk about some of the characters but I want to go through a few of these things and really center on that way you kind of know where we're heading and what we're looking for in the class and, and the things that we'll be kind of looking at in each thing that we read and watch now obviously I think most of us have either grown up reading books or watching movies or, or both and so we you know a lot of times those kind of things we take for granted you know, we, we, of course, we think of movies that we grew up on. Uh, if you've ever had this experience where you grew up on a movie and you loved it and watched it, you know, um, all the time, and then maybe years went by and you went back and watched it and you're like, why did I like this movie so much? If you've ever had that experience, it's kind of neat because you think, you start to really look at the story of it and think, well, why, you know, what, what was it about it that I enjoyed as a child? Um, my sister and I, we used to fight over which movie um, we wanted to watch. And so there was a film, there was two films that she always kind of gravitated towards and they were always long. And one was a musical and it just seemed to me as a child, I was like, oh my goodness, these are so long and the story is so boring. And then my films were like the films of the 80s and 90s that were, you know, cool and, um, you know just kind of funny and so now as I'm older and kind of get more into stories and stuff I'll watch some of the ones that I watch and think wow why did I, I you know I kind of can see a little bit of my sister's uh, disdain for him she is six years older so I think at that point she was already going these are dumb uh, and, and since some of the movies that she enjoyed I kind of watched down enjoy it more although there's one that I'm like okay it's still long and it still takes forever to watch so uh, I did enjoy reading that book though, and I'm not sharing which one it is because we get into that later. But, you know, what, what we're looking at with that is the story. What is the movie or the book trying to tell? Is it a good story? Now, there's all different kinds of good stories. There are stories that can be funny. There are stories that can be serious. There are stories that can be true. There are stories that can be just crazy uh, fiction, you know, science fiction or, or just uh, like I think of a children's story that's just fantastical and has all these different creatures and made up things and so it doesn't have to fit into a perfect mold of something but it's going to tell a story now there's movies I enjoy now that don't necessarily even have a uh, beginning middle and end where like something happens and there's conflict and then it's solved at the end a lot of tv shows do that where they have a, a dilemma at the beginning you know the characters have something happen and by the end of the show they fixed it and everybody's happy and it starts all over again in the next show uh there's movies that do that there is movies that have a you know definite like here's your characters here's the problem they have and boom they fixed it um, but then there's also movies that just explore life and just tell stories and maybe uh kind of end where you know it was in the middle of the story or end where the rest of the story could go on and you could you can even keep going and I'm not even necessarily talking about sequels um, where you, you know, leave it to where you know there's a definite sequel. Um, there's just movies that continue on. One I think of is a movie called HUD um, with Paul Newman. And uh, it is an older movie. Um, and so it tells the story of this rancher family. And there's conflicts in it. There's things that happen. But the story just kind of follows this young boy's life and his uncle HUD. Paul Newman and it just kind of goes through and just tells their lives and the things you know that the young kid is learning and and just experiences and then it just kind of ends 
I won't tell exactly if you want to watch it, but it ends in a way that you're like, well, there's still so much more story to tell, but it ends at that moment. So there's all different kinds of stories that you can tell. And so we're really focusing in on that. What story does the literature tell? What story does the film tell? Where do they agree? Where do they disagree? How do they compare to each other? Um, obviously, there's going to be challenges in both, and there's going to be differences in both. Once again, I, I shared this in the first video, you know, movies have time constraints, really, or even budget constraints, where they can only, you know, before you had a lot of CGI, computer graphics, stories and movies were kind of limited to their um, technology, what they could do. That's why comic book movies have really taken off now, I think, because the, the technology has made it to where you could tell those stories. But um, that's where you're going to have those constraints in movies. Books, though, can go on for however long they want. They can really do anything they want. The imagination's open because they can just tell the story. But they also have constraints. you got to keep the reader interested in different ways. you got to make sure that you're painting pictures that the reader doesn't get lost. And so, you know, there's all different kinds of things to telling a story. Uh, what a, this story in particular, I told you before, it's uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. He was big into doing movies that were suspenseful, <clears throat> that had kind of a whodunit uh, theory, you know, what's going on, who's the bad person, you know, or what happened, or who's, you know, uh, it's not always deals with uh, super dark things, but it, it kind of also can be like, I, I think of one called To Catch a Thief, where some, it's called a cat burglar is going around, and stealing things and so it's like who is the cat burglar is it the main character is it someone else you know and so you're guessing the whole film and so Hitchcock was very big into that genre of films he tells a story of when he was a kid uh, of course he was he grew up in England not not America and um, he was he'd gotten in trouble and his dad had put him in jail of course this is back you know like the um, I'm sure around 1910, 1920, you know, ish, and uh, maybe even a little bit before, but uh, when he was there, he was like six or seven years old, and when he was in jail, he got really scared, and obviously, and he just, that moment stuck with him where he felt like, I'm innocent, I'm an innocent person being jailed, and so a lot of his movies dealt with that subject an innocent person being framed or an innocent person trying to prove they're not the bad guy. Uh, one of his most famous films, North by Northwest, uh, with Cary Grant, uh, so was To Catch a Thief, by the way. Uh, Cary Grant is, is mistaken for someone. They call his name, uh, someone's paging his name, and all he does is just raise his hand to make the page come here to tell him to pass on a message. Well, the people that are trying to find the man they're paging see him raise his hand and call the page over and think, well, that's him. And it's not. He's just calling the, the person paging to him. And so they think he's this person they're looking for. And the whole movie is him trying to, you know, not be that person, trying to prove he's not that person. And so, and it gets, you know, he's uh, kidnapped and he's, you know, going through all these things. So uh, that is the whole premise of that film. And a lot of his films, Hitchcock's films, uh, deal with that like who is the bad guy is it an innocent person being framed and so that is kind of his genre uh, this film here he explores a lot of different themes okay and and the story that you're reading okay deals with this a little bit but I feel like the film is one instance where usually the book gets deeper into themes but because this is a short story it's a little bit different but usually the movies kind of gloss over and try to make just a good movie. Uh, this really, the movie in this one really explores this theme of should this man be watching all of his neighbors? Should he be looking out his window and seeing what's going on and making, you know, assumptions on what he's seeing? Now, I, I'm not going to tell you yet as far as in the movie. You may have seen this movie, um, and so you already kind of know, but... Uh, the movie has a reason for that, and so we'll look at, you know, is there a valid reason for him to be looking at and, and spying, what you could say, spying on his neighbors? And it really gets into um, 
you know, uh, that theme of there's personal life and what should you be a part of. Now, you know, we think about the world then and we kind of compare it to our world now. I think of social media as probably the closest thing we have to looking into people's windows. If that makes sense to that analogy where, you know, any more really people and neighbors, we don't, you know, especially you live in an area that's not in a city like this story takes place where your neighbors, you know, he looks out an apartment window and you can see like 30 apartments. Maybe you do live in an apartment where you can see that. But, um, you know, that's something where we don't have that access necessarily where that takes place. But yet on social media, we can pretty much see anything in anybody's life. And a lot of people are putting a lot on there that you're like, wow, you know, you're sharing quite a bit. And we can make jokes of that and we could be like, hey, we do it or they don't or I wouldn't do this and that. But that's part of, you know, studying that theme of what is personal, what is public, what is private you know, those kind of things. And so that's always been a theme that still is with us today as far as, you know, what is public life, what is personal life. And so they get into this in that story is, should he be, you know, making assumptions, thinking about their lives, making decisions based on what he's seeing? Because we all know there's things that we could see sometimes that we think we take our own, you know, misconceptions or maybe our own, uh, feelings on things and project them onto that and say, well, this is what's happening, even though it could be a totally different situation. And that's what the story and that's what the movie kind of kind of look at. Uh, some neat things that Hitchcock uses to explore this. Now, he made a set. Uh, he used a set where you had windows and you could see into these. Uh, but he actually dug down uh, in the set and made an extra like basement level thing. And that's like a courtyard that they make out of that that he made in the set so that he could have these shots, look down and see all the way up, see all these different windows. In fact, I found out just recently that even though that was a set and it was made and it was in a Hollywood set, um, there is a street that it was patterned after in New York because when you're watching it, you feel like you're in New York. You feel like you're in this, this cramped city that looks like New York and kind of takes place in New York in the, in the 50s. And so I found out there is an actual location which is now a goal of mine to go to because I, I go to New York often and I try to, uh, you know, see places that I know from films. I did that also in L.A. I went and saw a lot of different movies that I enjoyed, those ones that my sister hated. I went to the places where they were filmed or houses that were filmed there. Uh, I got to see Doc Brown's house in Back to the Future, so that was a neat thing. But there is an actual location where it's based off that you, in real life, someone could have done this. Someone could have like peered out and saw all their neighbors and, and made assumptions and things. Um, so, you know, there's uh, a lot of things. Hitchcock too would use as a director, there was things he would go for that, he, you know, different reactions, different things that he tried to um, get from the actors without letting them know. One famous scene is there's a couple that sleep out on the patio or on the, on their, um, yeah, patio of their, well, balcony because they're higher up. Uh, they sleep out on their balcony, which is like big enough for the bed. And so they would sleep outside because it was hot. And that's when the story is taking place. It was hot. So they'd sleep outside and it's comical. It's just comedy relief that he would do sometimes. Hitchcock would talk about that. He would try to put some comedy relief in his stories because they were so like, you know, suspenseful thing he tried to put a little comedy release in there and so you know they would do different things that were funny and they'd watch well one scene it starts raining and they're trying to get back into the house and get their bed back in the house well he didn't tell the actors it's a man and, and, a, and a woman that he has them he tells the one he told the one this really happened he told the one I want you to pull the bed uh, you guys are going to pull the bed into this side of the window. But then he told the woman a different thing. He said, I want you, you guys are going to be pulling the bed on the other side of the window. Didn't tell them that he told them opposite. So when they go to do it, they actually start like fighting and pulling it like, you know, a married couple would do as far as, you know, like that would really happen. And he wanted that real reaction. So he, you know, did that on purpose, told them separate things so that they'd actually be like tugging and 
fighting and falling. And so, um, you know, he, it was little things like that that kind of added to the story and added to the things that he would do. As far as plot, now that's where I was saying, um, you know, a lot of stories sometimes will have a, a definite plot, like, hey, this is, the, this is the crisis, this is the thing that needs fixed, and we're going to solve it. Uh, some don't, some kind of, uh, but that still is a plot in itself. It's like, we're going to tell this story of this person, or of this person's point of view, or of this thing happening. So, you know, really look for direction when you're doing that. Like, where's the story heading? What am, was it asking me to see in the story as the reader or as the viewer? You know, what, what am I trying to see in this? You know, and, and you, to do that, you have to, and, and sometimes with, especially with books, um, you know, you may see something in the story the author never intended, but because of your life experiences, you, you draw that from the story. And that's okay, that's gonna happen, but Two, you should always, when you're studying these things and kind of looking and, and trying to compare the two, you should always look at what was the author or what was the director trying to sin in this story. Was, was it just to entertain me for two hours? Was it just to, um, you know, tell this story? Or, you know, and you think of true stories, you know, were they just trying to tell the story accurately? Or were there themes that they were trying to address? Were there, you know, uh, different things that they were trying to look at, like in our own society or in our own life. And so plot plays a big part of that. Where are they heading in the story? What are they trying to prove? And so when you're reading this story, kind of think about that. Think where, you know, is this exploring like a total misunderstanding where, and you're going to get further into story and there's going to be things that you're going to go back and forth. Is he really seeing something bad and dark and sinister or is he like letting his imagination get away with him. And so that's going to be the plot of the story where you're going through and saying, okay, this tells me, you know, this part of the story is, is throwing me off because I really thought this, but now I'm starting to think this, or maybe it's just reinforcing. Well, yep. See that, that totally goes along with what I was already thinking. So it's going to be those, that push and pull where that story is taking you in the characters part because this was a short story, and, I, and a lot of times I will be asking questions about the characters, because you can't tell a story without the characters as far as developing them. You know, um, and, and part of this class too, hopefully I've had this happen in the past where students begin to see where they could, you know, hey, there's things I would like to tell in their stories, and, and one thing we do really draw that out in, in an assignment later that we'll do, where a person has that ability to create a story of their own or a person, you know, a, a person of their own or a character of their own. And so that's part of it is looking at the characters and saying, have I developed them? Have I uh, made them into a person that you can look at and say, yeah, I could see where they'd make that decision or yeah, I could see. And there's all different ways you could tell that story and tell those characters. Uh, there's actors and actresses that I have watched that I go, yeah, I get where they're coming from. I would do the same thing in that situation. Or, yeah, I could. And then there's ones that I watch and think, wow, I would have never done that or thought of that or said that. And so both can be interesting. Both can be, you know, one of those things. I always say there's actors that just totally own a screen as far as you, a lot could be going on and there could be all different dialogue and different things happening and explosions but yet you watch that person because it's like whatever they do is what's interesting. And so, you know, uh, James Dean was one of those uh, actors. He only made three films and we'll, you know, I say all this and I know I keep saying we'll talk about this later, but this is the first one uh, video. But as far as, you know, he, he was an actor that you watch what he did. He was very, uh, they call it sometimes method acting, but um, it was one of those things where you just kind of, his reactions, his things were something you were drawn to because it was interesting. And you were like, why, yeah, what's he thinking about this? What's his reaction to this? Um, and so, of course, Audrey Hepburn is one of my favorite actresses for many reasons, but um, she is one that, you know, just just her reactions, just her things, you, you end up watching her. You know, you end up, Grace Kelly in this story um, has a lot of that where she is totally, different character than that's in the story. There is no Grace Kelly role. There's no 
role in the short story that you're that you're reading. There's no, uh, she's basically um, Jeff's love interest in the film, but yet she plays a part in the story. Whereas in the short story, there's no role for that. Um, it was an added role, and so we'll get into as you finish the story and we compare it to the movie. We'll get into a little more of her character and why was it created and why was it there. So uh, anyway, I wanted to go through a few of these things as you read on. Be watching for these because the questions will stem from some of this. The plot, the theme, the story, the characters. Um, and so kind of watch that as you go through and you're reading this the week, the rest of the story. And of course, if you have any questions, make sure you reach out to me and uh, email me. And so hopefully... You know, uh, it'll go on and um, smoothly, and you'll be able to kind of draw where it's coming. Hopefully, you're already starting to draw conclusions of what's happening. And so, uh, good job. Keep that up, and we'll see you in a little bit.